Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. How are you all today? Good. Uh, so, today's topic is uh, managing emotions. Let me get the whiteboard ready. And being human. Yeah. So uh, before we start, uh, once again, I'd like to welcome everybody on board and uh, for those who are new, welcome to SGC where we have short puja, short meditation and uh, not so short dharma sharing. <laughs> uh, we, uh, the format of the of SGC is modeled after the Sunday Puja in the Buddhist library. Yeah, uh, I stayed in the Buddhist library for about four years, um, and I'm very inspired by uh, Bhante Dhammaratana's uh, uh, his his energy and fervor in uh, sharing Dharma. Yeah, so uh, the uh, the the format of puja is a bit different. Uh, we have some Pali chanting and then the Chinese chanting. So and you notice that this uh, Sunday this spiritual group cultivation is uh, mainly using English. Sometimes I may use a few words of Mandarin, and uh, sometimes in the notes I may write Chinese characters. And the aim is that. Uh, in, in Singapore in particular, uh, most of the younger generation tend to be English speaking. So uh, Buddhism, the, the teachings of truth is beyond words, but without words we cannot communicate. Without words then we cannot know what the Buddha realized and we cannot receive the teachings and know what to do yeah, as far as the practice is concerned. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, we, uh, so I, I chose to use English as a medium because I think it helps people to understand, especially the younger generation. So there are some students who ask like, so why don't we use Mandarin? Uh, we tried actually uh, about four years back. Uh, we tried, well actually no, five, five to six years back, back in 2014 when we first started. Uh, we tried to use some um, uh, Mandarin as well um, and so when we first started I would have uh, alternating weeks yeah, one week English, one week Chinese and then uh, but it, it became a bit confusing for some students so some of those who are Chinese speaking end up coming on the weeks which is English and then those who are English speaking end up coming on weeks which is Chinese uh, medium so then, in the end, I decided, okay, I'll just stick to one language. Uh, but still, why, why English? Because um, as far as the, uh, as the Buddhist community is concerned, there's a tendency to that the Chinese temples tend to use Mandarin, and the Theravadan and also the, the Tibetan tradition tend to use English. Yeah. So... Um, but there are a lot of uh, younger generation of Buddhists who who are drawn into drawn towards the Chinese Mahana tradition, or because of their parents, uh, like myself, 30 or 40 years back, uh, we are exposed and introduced to the Chinese Mahana tradition. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the language barrier, then we are not able to penetrate, you know, into the the, the teachings and the wisdom yeah so um, I, I I hope that through the English medium then um, the, the the younger generation of Buddhists do not lose out on the rich culture the rich tradition of wisdom and compassion that is found in the Chinese Mahana tradition yeah there's a wealth there's a treasure trove yeah, of wisdom found in the Chinese Tripitaka um, and because there are 
there are a lot of talks in mandarin already as far as (uh) (uh) I know so (uh) we don't need one more so to speak but granted (uh) some buddhist organisations (uh) when they invite me to give us a talk they may I I usually decide based on (uh) the needs of the organising (uh) (uh) team like if the temple (uh) request for chinese talk then I'll use chinese mandarin (uh) if they request for it to be done in english then I'll use english ya so welcome again ya and (uh) (uh) belated happy #vesak# to all (uh) #vesak# day was three days ago we I mentioned last week that I decided that (uh) there are quite a lot of different organisations having (uh) #vesak# eve and #vesak# day celebration so I'm (ppl) I I'm personally of the kind of mindset that if there's already people doing something then we just go and you know (um) support what they are doing you don't need to (uh) have duplicate (um) activities ya (um) and I I I think it was good ya (uh) the various organisations (uh) (uh) had very good uh, programmes throughout the day so I hope everybody had a meaningful way suck ya and today is special it's mother's day happy mother's day ya (uh) today's topic not directly relevant uh, or or related to mother's day ya managing emotions and being human (uh) less we we start to think that oh you know is it because mothers are more emotional no no it's not (uh) this is just a topic that uh, was suggested and I think it's something meaningful and incidentally uh, yesterday or the day before a student asked uh, more or less the same question about this ya about whether when we as we learn medi- buddhism and practice buddhism practice the dharma do we then become emotionless ya yeah. uh, because um, when we learn the teachings we learn about overcoming our emotions we learn about uh, managing our emotions so and often times it seem to point towards have um not having emotional response towards situations yeah uh so there's always there's sometimes this question uh, does it mean that as we learn dharma that is as we practice then we become less and less emotional emotion uh, oh. <laughs> we become more and more emotionless yeah become less emotional start to feel less is that the case Yeah so I ask I ask that student this, this question uh, maybe we can look at the flip side and ask ourselves uh, do we think that the buddhas the enlightened bodhisattvas the arahants do we think that they are unfeeling that they are emotionless towards anything that they don't um like uh so to speak don't have an opinion about anything yeah that they see someone being killed versus someone saving a life that they feel the same way uh that would be a bit odd isn't it yeah no oh. so let's take a look i'm going to switch over to the fine board and perhaps we can dis- have some discussion and today i want to uh give a bit more time for you to ask some questions because this topic um This topic is I think something that is very relevant to our day-to-day life. Uh emotions today is um is something that uh is quite strongly emphasized I must say. Yeah. Rather in pop culture in our in the media uh we seem to place a lot of emphasis on emotions. No. Oh. So maybe we can take a look. So let's see. Uh, switching to the whiteboard where is my whiteboard okay the whiteboard is here all right 
so let's see managing emotions and being human first of all maybe we can ask ourselves what do we mean by emotions okay hmm. uh, let me just erase that emotions yeah so what do we mean by emotions I think by and large we can all agree that uh, when we say emotions we usually talk about the the feelings that we have yeah towards something yeah so we can say that uh, this is talking about the feelings that we have yeah and it's directed towards something or towards someone or towards a situation And perhaps, maybe if we were to, uh, oops, sorry, let me just, uh, maybe we can shift this around a bit. Then we can say, hey, um, what if we were to put all this, uh, in a slightly different order okay and we say uh, let's group this let's move this around okay let's move this around and then let's move the someone up here and we put something here or maybe we put something below okay and let's put the situation up here and let's put something up here mm. then this would be um, what we usually say uh, 人事物 yeah? in Chinese when we say this is 人 this is 事 and this is 物 人事物 mm. so we have uh, an something outside okay uh, we can say it's outside maybe we can also say that it can be inside as well <clears throat> basically uh, something in this world okay and then we could say okay so this is uh, what is happening and then inside us we have some emotions and we we can loosely use this word feelings yeah uh, but again i want to say this is not okay this is not vedana no? in the in the sutta we you see this word vedana or so <clears throat> yeah and this is not okay not vedana because the vedana is more the raw experience and emotions is our response to, to whatever we experience yeah so as we interact with people uh, as things happen and we experience them as we come across things in our life and experience them also then we may feel a certain way towards it yeah and in this case it can range from a a list of different kind of emotions so perhaps um, I'd like you all to uh, throw in some uh, some variety of different emotions that you would like to look at okay so hmm so Lehua uh, 
mention emotion produce the action, disturbance, mood, temperament on state of mind. How do we manage it physically? Yeah. How do we manage it is physically or thought? Yeah, we can take a look. Uh, so maybe first of all, I want you to just list out uh, what you think, yeah, the kind of feelings you may have. Okay, so maybe I want you to just list out a few, uh, and then we can explore. So you can post into the uh, into the chat. Yeah, emotions are mental formations. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, some of you will notice that in my talks, I will mention some of the uh, Buddhist terms and also the Pali or the Sanskrit term. Uh, but sometimes I would also encourage you to refer to these experiences in your own words. Yeah, and the reason being, um, when on a day-to-day -day basis, you experience life, you go through life, yeah. Uh, the the way you experience it, oftentimes don't conform exactly uh, with the description found in the sutta. Yeah, uh, not that the sutta description is right or wrong, um, but it's just that we are not accustomed to that uh, level of thinking or that um, paradigm of of thoughts. Oh, and somehow. Oh dear, somehow my system today is rather unstable. Uh, I'm going to just continue and then um, maybe if I have to, if we have to, maybe wrap up early. Yeah, but uh, seems to be, to be a bit unstable today. Yeah. All right, so let's see how things work out okay yeah so um, let's see so I can see that you all have written down quite a bit of things uh, we have anxiety and frustration we have anger sadness resignation disappointment yeah so um, let's let's group all of them together Oh. Let's look at them and say uh, we can perhaps group them and say there are the uh, if we use uh, our normal lingo today, we can say that there are like positive feelings, yeah, and negative feelings. Okay, so if we say anxiety would perhaps be seen as a negative emotion, yeah, frustration, then we have anger, we have sadness, resignation. Disappointment, oh boy, <laughs> and then we have fear, positive emotions. We may we can say we have happiness, yeah, uh, we have uh, anger, sadness. We have already put it in, uh, proud. Uh, proud, uh, proud. Maybe let's put me, let's put it in somewhere in between. Uh, pride, yeah, feeling of pride. We have guilt and remorse. Mm. We have disappointment. It's already there. Can we say emotions are subconscious reaction? Some not something responsive. Yeah, let's take a look. We have jealousy. And so on. Okay, compassion uh, is compassion and emotion. Very interesting. Okay, 
So let's take a look. So we have compassion. Uh, fear, anger, joy, happiness, we have happiness, we have joy, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so feeling grateful, thankful, empathy. Yeah, and so on. All right. Uh, and we may have uh, shamelessness or shamefulness. We can have shamefulness. Versus shamelessness. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and yes, neutral emotions. Yeah. So. Mm. All right, so um, that's quite a lot, and yet is it is still not exhaustive, yeah. So, uh, question here. Okay, the question here is, uh, when we learn all this, all the teachings, um, is it right to say that uh, when we learn Buddhism and we learn to, uh, so the word manage is interesting because. Uh, I mentioned in the other class about how uh, nowadays it is uh, almost taboo to say control your emotions yeah, because nowadays control is like a dirty word yeah control yeah it it, it, it seems to point to how you, you are you are inept you know yeah uh, but control itself is not necessarily bad yeah control itself is not necessarily bad uh, I shared in some classes about this uh, this incident I had in uh, JC in a tennis class, and then the first the, the teacher someone served a, a, the ball and I hit it and I hit a home run, yeah, wrong game you know I went out of the court. So the teacher said, "Wow, well, you have a lot of power, but you need to have control. Yeah, power without control is uh, useless." Yeah, and then the teacher probably meant it in terms of just tennis, but it left a, a, a very strong imprint in me. Yeah, and um, I think it applies to many places. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with control. The question is, what are we trying to control, and how do we understand this control? Yeah. So this topic, uh, when this topic was brought up to to me. Uh, one of the volunteers, uh, the question he has was, uh, as we learn Buddhism and practice, it seems like we are trying to control our emotions or manage our emotions to the point where we are removing those that is negative. Yeah, So we don't want to have anxiety, we remove it. Frustration, we remove it. Anger, we remove it. Disappointment, we remove it. Jealousy, guilt, Remorse, shamelessness, resignation, sadness, fear, you know, all the the so-called bad emotions, negative emotions, we want to remove all of them. Yeah. So then uh, but the topic is managing emotions. How about happy emotions? How about compassion? How about joy? How about okay, pride we want to remove also. Yeah, how about gratefulness? Yeah, how about thankfulness, empathy, shameless, same shamefulness? How about neutral emotions? Yeah, and um, what does it mean to be human after that? Yeah, so there are some people who say that well, to be human is to be everything. Yeah, that if you are human, if you are human, then you should embrace all this as a whole. Yeah, you shouldn't reject any of them. Uh, in fact, in one of the class with the French uh, students at ESSEC, so one of the students asked, like, but um, having emotions is a natural thing. 
Yeah, why should we remove the negative emotions? Shouldn't we accept the negative emotions as they are and embrace it? You know, this is part of nature. So I asked this student, I said, well, the same can be said to, uh, towards emotions that people have that results in them acting in harmful ways, isn't it? That what if the person feel like um, uh, assaulting another person? What about if a person feel angry enough to kill someone else? Should they embrace such emotions? Yeah. And when we say that um, being human is to have all these emotions, um, how true is that? And what does it mean then to be human? Yeah. Uh, we we can agree that. Yeah, that most human uh, will have these emotions at some point given certain conditions right but let me ask you when you wake up this morning do you feel angry and anxious and frustration yeah and are there times where such feelings subside and go away because you maybe we are caught up with something else or maybe because the subject matter is not present yeah if we say that removing any of these emotions is removing our humanity, then you should never stop being angry. <laughs> that the moment your frustration or anger passes, then you are no longer human. But would that make sense? Doesn't seem to make sense, does it? So perhaps we can relook at this and say, um, being human, uh, we are subject to this emotions uh, but I think we can choose it's just like I, I told a French student I said if we say that we should embrace everything um, natural and we should not do anything about it then I said I should take off my specs and it so happened that she was wearing spectacles as well I said then all of us should not wear spectacles <laughs> because spectacles is augmenting our natural state which in our case, in some of our case, is afflicted with myopia, astigmatism, and so on. Yeah. So um, we have to recognize that being unenlightened. Uh, so this is where um, in Buddhism we don't say that human beings must be like this or like that. But as it is, most human beings, yeah. Most human, let me rewrite this for clarity. Let me use another color so that it's clearer. And maybe use a bigger thickness. So we have human. Yeah. Most human. And by most, what do we mean? Unenlightened. Most humans don't have perfect memory, but there are some humans with perfect memory. Most humans cannot run very fast, but there are some humans who can run very fast. Most humans tend to get upset when things don't go their way, but there are some humans who don't get upset even when things don't go their way. Most humans would care more for themselves than others, but there are some of us who are able to do that. Most human beings would fight back. Most human beings would lash back, tit for tat, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, until the whole world goes blind and crippled. <laughs> yeah. But there are some human beings who say, we don't have to do that. Yeah. That we can find a, a, a way out. Yeah. That doesn't involve killing everybody, killing each other. That doesn't involve hurting and harming each other. Uh, so does that make them less human? I like to think no. In fact, uh, that is what I would call being uh, wise in our choice of our humanity. Yeah, that if we if we packed the unenlightened state as the as the co lowest common denominator, then we have to ask ourselves: Do we want to stay 
in that kind of human state. Mm. Buddhism is not suggesting for us to uh, to be inhumane, but rather to be even more humane. Yeah, that there are certain aspects of humanity that is not very humane. Yeah, that when we are filled with anger, we can act in very inhumane way. In fact, when we feel greedy, yeah, when we feel greedy, we can act in ways that others will be shocked. Yeah, how can a human being do that? We even have idioms for that. Qing shou bu ru. Yeah, so uh, managing our emotions doesn't mean that we are taking away our humanity, but it means that we are using our wisdom, our compassion to choose the the aspects of our humanity that is worth keeping. That we should transcend some of the very base human impulses that is not helpful for ourselves or others. Yeah. But wait, some may, may ask, but if I were to take away all that, how about the positive emotions? Yeah. How about all these positive emotions? Do I also have to take them away? Emotions like happiness, compassion, joy, gratitude, yeah, thankfulness, empathy. Yeah. When we say manage our emotions, does it mean um, wiping every, away everything? So I asked, I asked the student this question, yeah, the, the student who asked me a similar question just one or two days back. Uh, do you think enlightened ones, uh, they are unfeeling, that they don't feel anything? So she said, uh, I, yeah, maybe not, probably not. Mm. So, uh, if we look at the, the suttas uh, as an example yeah, of, what, of how the enlightened ones are, you'll find that um, it is not that they don't have any more emotions. It's that they are in control of their emotions, firstly. And on the other hand, it is also that uh, they have transcended the very raw, uh, base, carnal impulses. Yeah that while for most people when they meet unreasonable individuals they respond with frustration they respond with anger but enlightened ones they do respond also yeah but they respond with compassion and why because when we meet someone unreasonable or someone who is saying hurtful things to us making unreasonable demands of us our focus is on who? We think that we are focusing on that person. But if we sit down and think about it, maybe after the fact, you may realize or you may observe that it is when we are focused on how we feel, when we focus on our self-interest, then our response is filled with negative emotions. Yeah. Uh, one of the prime driver is our ego, the self, attachment to this ego, attachment to I, me, mine, my, 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 my self-interest. Yeah. Enlightened ones, when they are faced with unreasonable individuals, uh, with painful circumstances and so on, uh, instead of responding with that instead of focusing on how they feel they, their, their attention is on the suffering on the other side yeah, so uh, enlightened ones is not, it's not that enlightened ones are blind to things and so they don't feel anything rather it is that they see the totality of things they see the very reasons and conditions why individuals act in such ways. They see not just, oh, my, 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 but they see the other side also. And when they see the other side, they see the conditions resulting in this state. When you hear someone shouting at you, we only hear the shout. And we, 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 we immediately 
focus on how we feel and how others look at us being shouted at. But the enlightened ones would look at that shout and behind it. What gave rise to shouting? Yeah, think about it. If everything is going well for us, our health is good, work is great, children, wife, husband, everything is nice, would we wake up on a Sunday morning and decide, let me go and shout at someone. <laughs> let me go and create trouble for somebody. Let me get upset with someone. Last I checked, I, I think nobody do that when things are going well. Ask yourself, when the last time was when we are emotionally charged, we are unhappy about things. Inevitably, it's because circumstances are such that it is unagreeable to us, disagreeable to us. That is not what we want, it goes against our wishes and we cannot accept that. So it's not just the disagreeable circumstances, it's that we fail to recognize that this is how things are. Our ignorance, delusion, our wrong expectations and perception leads to us having that frustration. Yeah? And then if we continue, perpetuate it, then we act. So for enlightened ones, when they are on the receiving end, they, they, see, they are able to see the whole totality and so they don't feel angry with us. In fact, instead, they feel compassion towards us. Yeah, they see comp compassion towards us. But it's not blind compassion. It's not just simply compassion, oh, your poor thing, compassion, compassion. But it's compassion grounded in wisdom, grounded in knowledge, in the totality of things, seeing clearly how and why we act in this way. Yeah. So uh, if we then look at this from unenlightened, okay, from unenlightened, we are trying to move where? We are trying to move towards an enlightened stage. Yeah? An enlightened stage. So from here, we are trying to move forward. Move towards. Let me try to increase the. Yeah? Move towards an enlightened stage. And in this enlightened stage, then there is clarity. Yeah? There is clarity. Mm. And with that clarity, with that wisdom, then wholesome emotions, positive emotions. It doesn't mean that monks and nuns or enlightened ones are not happy. Yeah? I think this is one of the fears of uh, many people when they learn the Dharma it feels as though oh dear uh, we, are, we are going to lose our happiness yeah? uh, no it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that um, just a second uh, my time seems to have adjusted somehow become 2.30 why uh? it's supposed to be 3 o'clock why is 3 o'clock Ah, oh, strange. Hmm. It's three o'clock. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. That sometimes we feel like we are afraid of uh, moving forward in the practice because we are afraid that we'll lose our humanity. Yeah. So uh, we don't have to fear that. Yeah. In particular, losing happiness. Uh, in the Buddha's time. The Buddha and his monks are described as the happy ones, yeah, the joyful ones. Uh, it wasn't described that the Buddha and the enlightened ones are sad ones, yeah, the joyless ones, no. Yeah. It's just that their joy um, is no longer over the trivial matters of, trivial mundane matters of this transient passing moment. Yeah. that their joy, happiness is uh, rooted in wisdom. Mm. So, uh, in a way, sometimes we say that as we practice, yeah, we do become less human. 
yeah if less human means that all these negative emotions yeah all the negative emotions are removed uh, if this means less human sign me up mm. uh, some of you may, may feel like no I want to still feel all this well then it's your choice it's your choice If we live our life such that when we encounter 人, 事, people, situation and things, that when we encounter someone, some situation and some things, if it's agreeable to us, we go up. If it's disagreeable to us, we go down. The key thing is, what, is this, what does this control mean? It means that are we able to decide do you want to decide to be happy or not happy? Don't worry about the, the, the details of which kind of happiness first. Ask yourself, just generally speaking, do you want to choose to be happy or choose not to be happy? Or are we resigned to, the, to, to, the, to, a, to a situation where we say, no, I can't control it. Because if we think in that way, if, our, if we live our life, basically being happy because things go away then being angry or sad or frustrated simply because things don't go away then this is what I would call the emotional roller coaster ride yeah where in a roller coaster ride you can't control you can't decide whether you go up or down it is a certain path yeah the difference is in a roller coaster ride you can see what's going to happen you know sometimes in our life we can see but even if you can see or not, you can't control it. And I will go further to say, that kind of life is making us living like an air conditioner, like a fan, like a TV. Yeah, what do I mean by that? It means that people can control how we feel. If we want it to be colder, ding, ding, ding. want it to be warmer, ding, ding, ding. like a television. Yeah? Uh, if they want us to be laughing, they switch to the comedy channel. If they want us to cry, they sit, switch to some soap opera where we cry. Hmm. How do we want to live our life? Do we want to live our life like a television where people can press our buttons? Literally, you know? Say the things, say this or that, and then it can cause us to be happy or sad. Uh, is this how we want to live our life? Yeah. I can't decide for you. Yeah, no one can decide for us. You have to ask yourself, what kind of life do you want to do? Yeah. Imagine if our life yeah, is like a book. Yesterday I was sharing with the Buddhist Fellowship Youth. If our life is like a book, it is not a book that is already written. Rather, it's a book with empty pages. And if it's an empty page, it means that it's full of potential. Yeah. It means that there's no fixed title. And as I shared with them yesterday, it means that there's no fixed purpose. No purpose. The purpose is still written as we speak. To me, that gives us so much potential and possibilities that we can decide, ask yourself what kind of book ultimately that becomes. But if we don't manage our emotions, it means that your book is not written by you. Think about it, your book is not written by you, but by how others act, or how others not act, by how others speak and how others not speak. Think about it. If each of us get to publish a series of books, yeah, or maybe just one book in one life, do you want to let people write, decide what is written inside? Or do you want to be the director of your life? to be the script writer of your life, to be the author of your life, and decide, my book is going to be about this person who live a happy life. My book is going to be about this person who didn't just live a happy life, but also was of benefit to others. Or maybe we are not having much uh, like grand, grandeur or anything. We just want to live a simple life, okay? And we just want to take care of our children, our family, our husband, our wife. Yeah? 
and we just want to live our life and not get into anybody's way sure now how can you ensure that that is what the book is and not that oh this book is about a person who tried to live a simple life but end up being really angry and upset and bitter <laughs> how do we prevent that yeah. I, be I believe it's about how we can manage our emotions yeah. managing emotions uh, it's not about losing our humanity it's about managing our humanity deciding what kind of human we want to be I would want to invite you to ask yourself uh, what kind of book of humanity do you want to write? Would it be one of happiness and joy or would it be one of sadness and grief? Uh, I like to I like mine to be one which is uh, of service of joy and happiness not just for myself but for people around me and even uh, people who like or dislike me that this this book will perhaps inspire others to do likewise yeah uh, that's all I have to share for today uh, let me read some of the uh, comments that came in after that I feel that if we are not driven or controlled by our emotions we can experience more happiness inner peace and calmness absolutely most agree Chloe yeah um, Wendy asked how do we control our emotions logically we know we should not be upset angry etc but the emotions just come yes you are right uh, initially it's like that so the first step I'm glad you asked yeah, because a huge part of this talk is about overcoming that um, stigma because if we don't overcome the stigma that it's okay to control emotions to manage our emotions then if we just jump straight into the how we sometimes get uh, find ourselves you know having doubts having questions and being half-hearted in our efforts and the reason is because we haven't clarified the why yeah the the, the um, some of the, the, the subtle nuances at the get-go yeah, which is what most of this talk is about that um, managing our emotions doesn't make us less human no? but of course then we have to ask ourselves the question how do we actually manage our emotions, control our emotions and the first step is really to recognize our emotions recognize in what sense? to be aware of our emotions a lot of people think that practicing Buddhism means that we just suppress our emotions uh, far from that yeah. granted, are there circumstances where we should so-called sus suppress them? I, I, I tend to think of it as again, moderation yeah, or, or uh, st staying clear of the extremes or one extreme is totally embrace your emotions the other one is that uh, suppression is, is you know we shouldn't suppress and so on and so forth there is a time and place to suppress for example if you feel intense emotions and rage and uh, you feel like doing something really bad <laughs> okay yeah I mean sometimes we feel that way okay uh, that would be a good time to maybe you know as a stopgap measure just suppress it just climb it down and say you stupid <laughs> this stupid emotion stay there <laughs> you know uh, but if you just if that is the only trick you have if that is the only tool you have in a tool bag then you, you might encounter some problem down the road you may find that it works once or twice but not on the long term yeah. so the right tool for the right time for the right circumstances emergency stop get measure yes just clamp it down but in the long term you need to revisit this and examine and understand why this emotion yeah and then to be able to neutralize it to diffuse it but not simply to wield it away in buddhism we say 
we have to understand the origin of it, how and why this arises. And more often than not, it is linked to our attachment, linked to our ego, linked to how we relate to the subject matter in reference to us. Oftentimes, we, we, we try to understand in terms of, oh, what's wrong with that thing? No, it, it's, it's really about that. Sometimes it is, yeah. But if you go down just going down that route, oftentimes it becomes just a blaming game. We just try to, uh, we, we end up unconsciously or consciously thinking about all the flaws of that thing. That's why I'm so upset. It's fine. Ask yourself, what does all those problems mean to you? Because if it doesn't mean anything to you, you won't be upset anyway. You won't. It is when all those problems, all those flaws, all those faults has an impact on us and our interest is being threatened or damaged then the emotional response comes in Why? Because we value the interest that we have So each of us must do that contemplation understand ourselves and another let but then, in this way, we, we see clearly what is the problem, what is the real problem, what is the root cause of our emotions coming up. That is just the, the subject matter, the Ren Shu out there. We don't say it's disconnected also. We say that it is but one of the conditions. Yeah? The, the trouble with, with our usual thinking is we think that this is the cause. No, this is just a supporting condition. Why? Because sometimes you may feel that this is the problem, you remove it, you encounter another person, same reaction. So what is common? Our way of thinking. Our inability to accept that things don't always go our way. Yeah? So first step, recognize the emotions that arise, but not to get stuck with it, but to then further explore how and why this arises. Yeah, don't be so quick to want to go and remove it. Understand first. Yeah. And the exploration is, shouldn't just be about the external thing, but try to understand the external in terms of ourselves. How does it affect us? You'll find that when you investigate in this direction, it is always linked back to us. If it's not linked back to us, we won't be responding. Either directly or indirectly, it's linked back to us. Oh. Uh, then from there, we can take some steps. Okay? Mm. So, uh, Chloe says, let it come, let it go. Technically, you don't have to control your emotions, but don't let them control you. Do deep breathing. If it helps you calm down, you can control your response regardless of your emotions. Yes, that works. Uh, if you are able to do that, what it means is to observe as a like a, almost like a third party, you know, observer. Uh, emotions need us to fuel it. If you don't respond to it, don't fuel it. Like any phenomena, you will just subside after a while. But this approach, uh, in the long term, is also but a mitigating uh, measure. It doesn't resolve the root issue. Yeah. Unless by doing this, you start to see that it's not worth getting worked up. Yeah. So another angle is to use the teachings to analyze the root cause, as I explained earlier. Then, at some point in future, you may encounter the same circumstances, but your response is different already. Why? Because you relate to it differently. Huh? So Sherry asks, after learning Dharma from Shifu, I'm more sensitive with my emotions and defilement. Is that correct? Yes, very good. Uh, learning Dharma helps us to be more aware. And so naturally, we become more sensitive towards our emotions. That means there's more clarity and more awareness. That's good. Well, well done. Yeah. It doesn't mean that we, bec we become more emotional, but it just means that we are more aware of them. Uh, it is not that learning Dharma creates them is that learning Dharma creates that awareness of the emotions and defilements. Now, good, keep it up. 
then from then from we can control and manage our emotion and defilements. Yes. Yeah. Only when we become more sensitive, and by more sensitive means we are more aware. Then we can manage them. Maybe we should find out why our emotions arise and reconcile to tackle it head on. Absolutely, as I shared earlier. Very good. Uh, Wendy says, I will try. Thank you, Chloe. Yes, very good. Shifu, knowing yourself, writing your book about yourself, then manage your emotions, your expectations, reduce our craving and manage an understanding of impermanence of nature. Yes, Ricky, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, over the years, I start to appreciate that learning Dharma is not learning about some subject out there. It's not a religious knowledge subject out there, really. Uh, learning Dharma is about learning about ourselves, about our existence, about everybody. Yeah, because the Dharma is describing this world. Yeah. It's not describing something out out of our realm. Uh, it's describing our very very mundane state, and how despite this mundane state, we can transcend that. And if we transcend that, how to transcend that? And by transcending that, how we can actually uh, live a different kind of life, yeah, that we don't have to continue to suffer. Mm. Good. Uh, we need to acknowledge it, observe the consequences. Yes, it's transient. Mm. One last thing I would like to share uh, about emotions <coughs> is uh, I've been sharing in the past few years about how uh, in many of the counselling uh, cases that I've handled, uh, two things strike me. Uh, one, emotions. Two, our thoughts. There are many students are uh, afflicted with these two things. Uh, afflicted in the sense that they are, they are drawn into engaging with their emotions and thoughts that they feel compelled to act on their emotions, to act on their thoughts. That because I feel this way, I must act. Because I think that way, then I must act accordingly. Um, if we simply live our life acting in response to how we feel, what we think, uh, our, I think We'd be very busy. Yeah. Our feelings, our thoughts come and go. Today we feel this way, tomorrow we may change our mind. Today, because I feel this way, I act, I act in this way. Tomorrow we change our mind, we regret over our actions. Today I think in this way, I feel so strongly about it, I think this must be it. And so I I say this, I say that, I do this, I do that. Tomorrow I change my mind. You have different thoughts coming in and out, arising, going, arising, going. Yeah. Uh, think again. Do we guide our emotions, or are we guided by our emotions? Hmm. Yeah. If we are, if we live our life being guided our emotions and our fleeting thoughts, then. We'll just go around, go around, yeah. Doesn't mean we are de denying ourselves of our emotions, yeah. But to recognize those emotions and ask ourselves, which are the ones that is helpful, which are the ones that is destructive, you know. It's just like when you're walking along the park. If you smell some sent from the flowers okay but you still have to move on if you don't you get stuck there you keep on smelling then you are going to be stuck in the park similarly if you walk past a dumpster and it stinks do you want to just stay there and just keep smelling the dumpster or in fact even after walking past it keep thinking about this the smell from the dumpster is our choice. Yeah. So if we can relate to our thoughts and emotions like the, the in terms of 
that transient state that's passing, then we have to ask ourselves, do we have to act so strongly uh, in response to our emotions and thoughts? I'm not saying that we cannot, I'm saying we should be in control, we should be deciding. Yeah. We should have the right to decide, the freedom to decide how to act in response to certain emotions, in response to certain thoughts. Then you may ask, so how do we respond? Well, ask yourself, if I act in a certain way, does it lead to my welfare and benefit? Does it lead to my long-term happiness? And does it lead to welfare and benefit of others, people around me at large, and their long-term benefit? Yeah. Now, of course, we, we can go into the subtle nuances of, oh, but sometimes the benefit is subjective. Yes, granted. Yeah. Uh, but first of all, if we are not even able to take a step back and say, I decide, then the rest is moot point. Because if all we do is follow our emotions, then the question of whether the benefit is truly beneficial is not even in the equation. The first thing we have to do is to, to realize that we can be and should be in control, that we should be the one to decide, that we don't always have to act on our emotions or thoughts. Oh. Uh. Rossi says, agree with Sherry, but not easy, absolutely. Not easy to control emotions. But Shifu, how can we tackle our innate want to pursue our self-interest? How? Uh, in Buddhism, the teaching on causality is never simply to just go and tackle the outcome. Our innate, seemingly innate pers uh, want to pursue our self-interest, that is the result. You cannot just remove the result without tackling the cause. So instead of trying to tackle the innate want, tackle the cause, yeah, which is our ego, our perception and everything mixed up together. And perhaps our, the way we look at it and express it, yeah, to realize that it may appear to be innate, but not necessarily innate. Because if we already start out with the thought that it's innate, then, or, then what's the chance, right? Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Shifu. I think if I can, if I can manage emotions, especially negative ones, I can prevent myself from doing unwholesome deeds and thinking unwholesome thoughts and thus preventing more unwholesome, more bad karma from me, from both me and the other party. Yeah. If I, if I may, maybe we can have some simple exercise to do yeah, for the week to come. Uh, try this exercise. Don't try to, to don't try too hard beyond what you are already doing to manage your emotions first, but add on one more step, which is try to do a do an emotion journal. Yeah, uh, you can write it on a small notebook, or you can just create a Google sheet or something in your handphone, and uh, you don't have to do it like on the fly, but at the end of the day, do a daily reflection how has your day been <clears throat> yeah do, do it in a point form yeah don't don't, don't write these long stories uh. do it in a point form okay today uh, how would i you know um, measure my overall emotional state yeah one to ten ten being positive one being negative or minus ten to plus ten you know something and then ask yourself, what are the significant emotions that came about? Yeah. Try to train up this awareness of your emotions for a start. Yeah. And try to be aware, how does it feel like when you, are, you feel angry, when you feel anxious? They are precursor states. That means uh, changes to our body and mind prior to that. If you can become more and more aware of the precursor states, that means states preceding the those emotions because way before your anxiety there's a whole series of sequences and if what i observe is anything to go by for example anger you don't just become angry 
a lot of people think, oh, I just snap. Yeah, it appears that way, but prior to that, it's a whole sequence of mental discursive thoughts. Yeah, fixation over certain things, and we just spin out of control, and then it culminates in anger. Yeah. Now they are all different, so one simple exercise to do is just learn to be aware first. Yeah. For those of you who have done this exercise before, you can try the other exercise which is for one week, don't comment on anything unless it's life and death matter and then see what happens. Yeah. And maybe next week, if you all can remember, come back when we have the class, you can share your thoughts. All right. Mm. I mean, th that's not all you have to do, but that's a very important starting point. Uh, so E mentioned, Sifu, I'm very quick-tempered. Yeah, I try to control, but there are times that I will just flare out, but I don't mean to, and will forget the unpleasantness fast. However, I know, th I know that the person who will get it from me will be upset during the moment. How to further control this quick temper? So Song Yi, uh, if you like, you can try the two exer exercises I've mentioned. So uh, do a emotion journal, map it out, and it's not just one week really. You have to map over like three, four weeks or more. Yeah, and then when you see the pattern, it it gives you that. Um, it, it, it gives you a, a better feel of your emotional state and not just based on what you remember yeah uh, then you can start working on it yeah and the other exercise which is to just try to resist commenting on anything important thing is that it's not to comment on anything whether it's something pleasant or unpleasant because we only want to remove the unpleasantness but the as I mentioned in many classes the mechanism for pleasantness and unpleasantness the mechanism is the same if you want one the other one you cannot run away yeah the trouble with us is we tend to want to remove anger but not the other the, the other emotions yeah no. so try this all right told me Sometimes display of negative emotions is necessary, such as showing anger to train dogs to behave or even humans to behave. In what sense, in that sense itself as a positive function, would that be valid? Yes, Tommy has asked this question quite a few times and I've shared, uh, I've replied several times uh, and he, each time he says, okay, makes sense. Then after that, he seemed to just go back to, the, to that state again. Yeah. Uh, so, but the questions has changed. I must say that the questions have changed. Yeah. So now it's, it's more about showing a display of negative emotions. Yeah. Uh, so in the Buddhist tradition, there are some texts that talk about how uh, teachers may skillfully express anger without actually having anger. Yeah. So to display that so that the, the students know the significance. Yeah, so that is a bit different from the way that this same question was asked some one or two years, maybe one year ago, uh, by this same student Tommy. Yeah, in the past, he his point seemed more about the actual anger itself. Yeah, now it has changed to a display of anger. Uh, that's quite different. Yeah. So hi, Shifu. Can we think of our emotions as separate entities from us? That is, our emotions do not define who we are. Yes, absolutely. Emotions come and go. Um, in fact, it is this very problem that we identify with them and define our, define a, an I based on that. That is the problem. Yeah. So the Buddha's teaching and realization, realization and teaching of no self directly tears this apart. Yeah. that I'm gone at this moment. Akai emotion as non-verbal communication. Show of compassion and empathy are also emotions which can take a toll, toil on ourselves. Should be, I think, take a toll. Yeah, then what does that need control as well? Well, 
initially when we try to express compassion and empathy is tainted yeah there's still a lot of self-interest involved so yes it can take a toll uh, but as we practice and our compassion become purified yeah uh, then it doesn't take a toll yeah uh, as a matter of fact in some of the texts it talk about bodhisattvas at a rather high level that Kwan Sin Pusa himself at some point feels so disheartened he wanted to give up so yes it does take a toll but uh, at the much later stage when it becomes completely purified then no more such problem mm. and, and to me that 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 is uh, the beauty of the, the teachings that it doesn't assume some superhuman state you know that even the very high level bodhisattvas are uh, that to me when I read about the high level bodhisattvas feeling exhausted yeah feeling weary uh, it speaks of a very human state that I can relate to and most importantly that despite that they are able to transcend it it gives me a lot of courage and strength that yeah because we are not perfect we, we sometimes also feel tired yeah but seeing that example, we feel inspired to push on. Like, okay, I, I, maybe I take a rest first, but I want to continue. Yeah. Hi, Shifu. Does, Li Hui says, does this mean that when emotions or thoughts arise, the short-term advice is to be aware of it, but not be reactive to it? Yes, as a, absolutely. Yet at the same time, as a long-term approach, we can still investigate our emotions to find out what is the root cause of our negative emotions and try to overcome them example attachment to our ego and self absolutely yeah absolutely uh, me <laughs> me go uh, me replies to Tommy training of dogs never involve the showing of anger this is wrong I like that I have never trained dogs before so I I, I did I don't know better but uh, yeah uh, we don't necessarily have to show anger uh, at the drop of the head. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure whether there are ever any circumstances where we have to uh, training anyone. Yeah. So uh, is this real Ong or Jo Ong or Rijo Rijo R J O? Is the J pronounced as Y? If it is, then it's real. If not, if it's H, then it's Ruho. Or if it's J, then it's Rojo. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce your name. But uh, Ong, thanks Sifu for answering my questions earlier. Similarly, can we say that our thinking and our body can also do not define who we are? Am I right? Uh, short answer, yes, it doesn't. Long answer, while it doesn't, our, our current state is we tend to identify. Yeah. Uh, instead of going into the does it define or not define uh, the, the Buddha's approach is why don't you go and examine whether it is fit to define you yeah is it something good enough to define who you are uh, this is the Buddha's approach and you may upon investigation come to the same conclusion as he and other enlightened ones do or did that this itself uh, is so fleeting and transient and conditional that it is not fit to be identified as uh, an essence of who we are for that matter what is the who yeah shifu does that mean people who suffer from compassion fatigue are exhibiting compassion which are impure in what way is it impure yeah so um, compassion fatigue is uh, a term oftentimes to describe that uh, let's say caregivers or people who are helping others at some point kind of burn out yeah and if we go by that definition because many same word but different people may think of it differently if we go by that angle um, oftentimes what i see is when we say we have compassion, we want to remove suffering or we want to help people. But when we say we want to help someone, 
this tainting, this impureness is about do we have the expectation that the person must accept our help, number one, must act according to how we want it to be, and the result must be how we want it to be. Yeah, Our attachment to how our help, and it must be from us, the way we do it, and the outcome must be a certain way. Yeah. Uh, so if we knowingly or unknowingly help in this way, then the burnout can happen. Yeah. The burnout happens when we try and try and try and it doesn't go the way we want. Yeah. So this is one angle that would apply where it is impure. Yeah. Uh, granted, because different people may call different experiences as compassion fatigue, so it may vary. Yeah. But in this particular instance, the way I see it, uh, that would be a form of compassion fatigue that is due to our attachment to how we want things to become. Uh, but it's not easy. Because when we want to help, we tend to have some ideal state or perceived state of... Oh dear, what happened? The video is interrupted again? Yeah that we tend to have this idea that some ideal outcome that it should be. Yeah, and if it doesn't go that way, or our way, then we may feel frustrated. Oh. If we can overcome that, imagine the possibility. Emotional arouses through five senses, stimulating of senses. Uh, ah, okay, so it's actually Richard Ong. Yeah. My wife's name is Jessie Ong, so we choose uh, R. Joe as our name. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, Richard and Jesse Ong. Oh. Yeah. Alright, so I have covered all the questions. Uh, Alison just dropped in one more. That's the last thing I'm going to cover, then we're going to uh, wrap up. The next class is going to start soon. Uh, that Diamond Sutra class. So, does how well we control we can control our emotions depend on how strong our mind is? To a large extent, yes. Because when I try not to react, it's very hard. Sometimes I have to lock down myself in meditation pose not to react further. It feels like a mind versus mind battle. Pretty much so. It is. Yeah. Uh, but for many people, this feels very contrived. It feels very almost. Um, unnatural yeah but if you think about it many things we human do is unnatural yeah if natural means you know effortless yeah uh, walking is effortful yeah work is unnatural wearing spectacles is unnatural a lot of things are unnatural but we do it because it can bring us benefit it can bring others benefit yeah so take it in your own pace Pace yourself on well, the two exercises I mentioned. Try it out. All right. In the meantime, take care. Uh, stay safe. Stay healthy. Be well and happy. Yuan xiao san zhang zu fan nao. Yuan de zi hui zhen ming liao. Pu yuan zui zhang xi xiao chu. Shi shi chang xing pu sha dao. Amitabha. Qi li.